Hello everyone. Welcome back to another Albanian dev tutorial. In this tutorial I will show you 10 best extensions I always use in my projects. So, without wasting more time let's take a look at them. Let's begin with the one that you might have already noticed if you've been looking at this code. I'm talking about this indent highlighter. To install it go to extensions and search for indent rainbow. This is the one. Here you click the button install. For me it shows this uninstall button since I've already installed it. This extension highlights the code indents which makes it easier to read. Let's check the CSS file. JavaScript also. That's the first extension. The next is highlight matching tag. You can probably understand its function by its name only. To install it go to extensions, search for highlight matching tag and choose the first option. This is the extension. This extension basically helps us find the closing or opening tag of an element. You can see I put the cursor to this tag and automatically highlights its closing tag. This is really helpful when we have a lot of tags nested inside each other. The same, if we highlight the closing tag it will show us the opening tag. And we're done with this extension also. With this extension we can rename one of the tags and the other will get renamed automatically live. To install it go to extensions and search for auto rename tag. Choose this extension and install it. So let's try renaming this nav to navbar. This tag doesn't exist so we'll remove it. Let's also change this div to division which also isn't a real tag. Div stands for division. It works the same if we rename the closing tag. The opening tag will get rename automatically live. Just like that, simple and effective extension. The next one is better comments. With this extension we can write better and more meaningful comments to our code which we can understand by just looking at them. Better comments help us categorize our comments as we wish. To install them just go to extensions and search for better comments. Click this option and install it. Here you can see different type of default comments. Let's try them. Press Ctrl plus forward slash to add a comment. Add the star symbol and you can see it automatically turns to green. This is an actual comment. Let's see the other ones. Questions. Alerts. To-dos. Line through comments. I think these are the default ones, but as I said in the beginning you can also add others. Click this bottom left wheel. Then click settings. In this search bar search for better comments. Go to extensions and choose better comments. Here you can see edit and settings.json. Click that. And in this page we can edit. Remove and add some new comments. Let's try it. Let's copy and paste these lines. For example we can add any tag here that we want our comment to start with. Let's try a LB def. We will only change the color of the text and the background color. Here you can see there are many other options you can use. But let's keep it simple for this tutorial. Make sure to save the changes to this settings.json file. Let's add a comment with the LB dev tag. But you can see it's now working. That's because we need to refresh the Visical Studio code. 
To do that you can close it and reopen it again or go to command palette and type reload window. And you can see now it's working. We're also done with this extension also. Let's jump to the other one. If you've been coding in Visual Studio Code for a while then you've probably heard about this extension. This extension does exactly what its name says. It makes our code prettier. To install it just go to Extensions, search for Prettier. And choose the first option. Let's mess up some code in purpose and then format it using Prettier. And to format this code all you need to do is press Shift plus Alt plus F. Let's also try it for the CSS. Shift plus Alt plus F. Let's try it in the JavaScript file also. Shift plus Alt plus F. And boom. Next extension. The next one is CSS Peak. When we write many lines of CSS most of the time it's hard to find the class that we want to edit in the CSS file. With CSS Peak all the need to do is hover over or click the HTML class and we can take a look at its styling. To install it we have the same process. Go to Extensions search for CSS Peak and install the first option. To peek some stylings all we need to do is press and hold Ctrl and hover over the HTML class with your mouse. And here you can see this class stylings. Let's try others. You can see this content class has three definitions. It basically means that this class has been mentioned three times in the CSS file. To take a look at it we need to press Ctrl and click it. Here you can modify this class live and at the right side you can see all the times this class has been mentioned. Just click one and you can change its stylings there. To modify the classes that have been mentioned only once. Like this one, just press Ctrl and click it. It sends us right to this class in the CSS file where you can modify it. Next extension. The next one is Colorize. Colorize adds a cool background highlight to the color values in the CSS file to make it easier for us to guess the color that we have used. To install it just go to Extensions. Search for Colorize. Choose the first option and install it. Here you can see the background color has a cool orange background highlight based on the color we used. Let's see another one. Look at this one 81818 hex color. This FFF. And etc. The next one is Google Fonts. This is one of my favorite extensions. I use this extension 99% of the time when I use CSS. This extension import Google Fonts to our file with one click. Instead of going to Google Fonts website and searching the font, choosing it. Selecting which styles you want to add to it, then copying and pasting it to our file. With Google Fonts all we need to do is search the font and press enter. To install it just go to extensions, search for Google Fonts. And choose this option to install. With it you can import fonts to the CSS file or you can add it to HTML file using link element. To import it, just open the command palette. You can open it by going to the settings and selecting it or I prefer using the shortcut Ctrl plus Shift plus P. Here type Google Fonts. You can see the first option is to import the font, and the second option is to add it using link tag. We'll try importing it first. Here search the font you want to use. Let's try Railway. And here we have it. We imported it in three seconds instead of going to Google Font website and wasting one or two minutes. Now let's link it to HTML using link tag. Go inside the head tag, 
Press Ctrl plus Shift plus P. Type Google Fonts and choose the link option. Search the font you want to use and press Enter. And here we have it. Let's go to the next extension. Well, this extension I'll show you now is totally unnecessary. I added it to this list just to have some type of cool relaxing extension. This extension is called Visual Studio Code Pets and basically spawns cute pets to our editor. To install it search for VS Code Pets and choose the first option to install. To spawn pets just click the pet icon at the bottom nav. Here you can see these cool pets in the Visual Studio Code. You can spawn more pets by clicking the same icon. Choose the pet and after that choose the color of the pet. And here it is. I know you didn't expect this extension in this list so I hope you liked it. Now let's check out the last extension of this list. The last one is the extension called Live Server. Normally. When we make changes to our code and save, most of the time we go and refresh the browser to see the result. This extension basically creates a local server to our default browser so when we make changes to our code and save them, it refreshes the browser automatically. To install it we have the same process. Search for Live Server. Choose the first option and install it. To open it you can right click in the HTML file and choose the open with live server option. Or you can see at the bottom nav we have a button which says go live. Just click it and it will open this project to the browser. Let's test it. Let's go to CSS file and make some changes. Save it and take a look at it. You can see the navbar background color change to red without refreshing the browser. Let's also change the navbar link's color to blue. Save it and take a look at it in the browser. You can see it changed them to blue automatically. By the way I created this responsive portfolio website some months ago. Let's explore it but first let's undo the changes we added to the navbar. This portfolio has four pages but you can't scroll to the other pages. To do that we need to click the links in the navbar. Let's try the about page. When we click the link you saw it scrolled down the page and we can take a look at it. Let's also take a look at the contact page. Here you can see this beautiful contact page. Let's try the work page. Here you can find cool projects that I created. A cool 2.5 parallax effect with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. A custom upload button which shows the preview image. Funny JavaScript project, which I recommend you taking a look at it. A simple image editor with HTML, CSS and JavaScript, etc. I added all the links of these projects in the video description if you're interested in improving your HTML, CSS and JavaScript skills. Click at the top right card to check out how I created this beautiful portfolio website using HTML. CSS and JavaScript. Make sure to subscribe for cool videos like this one and like the video so I know that you liked it. Thank you and see you next time.